Hey, yo, what it be like? You know, they told me I need to do more content, but I be moving around all day. I be busy. So I'm about to go ahead on and just run it. I don't even know this is off the rip, random. You know what I'm saying? Oh, shit, what I want to talk about today, y'all. How y'all been doing, first off, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's the first and foremost, you know what I'm saying? I hope everybody been doing lovely out there. Um... I think today I'm going to talk about just the condition of society. I'm not going to say nothing wrong with it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, obvious, obviously, um, you know, majority rules. So um, I can't even I can't even be mad about it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just I just want to talk about it. You know, um, like like, for instance, with the majority rules. Like, now what majority am I talking about? Cause I I could I could throw a race on it. You know what I'm saying? Shit, I'm playing speed racer out this bitch on this traffic circle. Y'all hold on real quick. Let me hit this turn. Now, uh, like I'm saying though, you know, <clears throat> I don't got no problem with it. But just realize that just because I don't have a problem with shit. The standards, the status, the way people move, the way society is, just because I don't have a problem with it doesn't mean that I'm going to condone it and I'm going to jump in and be a part of it. You feel me? So, um, I mean, it's a lot of ills in society that I, I figure this ills because, like I said, majority rules. So majority don't feel that society is fucked up. They like it. They condone it. They take part in it. You know what I'm saying? Cloud culture, WAP era, um, six nine the snitch snitch era, okay. So, I mean, this is the culture. Now, is it is it a black and white thing? That's that's still up for personal opinion because I don't hang out with too many outside of my race like that. You know what I'm saying? If I'm doing some illegal shit. I ain't fucking with nobody outside of my race nine out of ten times. So I don't know if that's just, you know, our uh the black black culture, quote unquote black culture. Um, but I mean it just is what it is. It's just like it's just like with with all these black people, once you tell them you could tell them they from Africa, there's no issue. When you tell them that they came from America or that they're Native American there's issues like all black people is just the same like if that was the case then wouldn't all white people be the same all asian people be the same even all the middle eastern people ain't even the same you feel me they ain't all the same shit let me fix this bitch they ain't all the same you feel me so um when i when i think about that i just be like well damn well why all the black people gotta be the same? I don't give a fuck if you going down to to, to fucking Mexico. They treating they dark skinned people just like the niggas that's in America. You see what I'm saying? So it's like all black people. Let them tell it. All black people came from Africa. There there was no black people in this North American continent before Christopher Columbus came here, but. When he arrived, he met copper-colored people. So, black and copper is the same color now. You see what I'm saying? Like, 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 this is society. This is society. Copper-colored means black. Colored means black. You could be a whole blue, pink-ass motherfucker. You still gonna be considered black. You know what I'm saying? That's just what it is out here. I'm going to pull over and roll up this blunt real quick. You know what I'm saying? While we continue this. Uh, shit, if I don't fuck up my uh, my little phone in the stand and shit. But you know what I'm saying? So I, I like, I'm like, well, damn. Excuse me. Even the light-skinned niggas is niggas. is black folk. Like the, the, the people that look like white people with a tan. Nah, you black. You know what I'm saying? You ain't even tan. What's a t what what is a tan? 
You know what I'm saying? Like, like when you think about a tan, white people getting tan, and they come out tan, and then we got mulattoes that look tan, but they not tan, they black. Like my hair. You see my hair and my skin is two different colors, but this is all black in today's society. So you know what I'm saying? This is... I, I really don't got no problem with it because I know how to interpret. I might talk to somebody that's 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 black and be like, yeah, we niggas. But then I might talk to somebody that actually got a little bit of education about their nationality, about where they came from or about their people. And then, yeah, you might be Jamaican or you might be West African from like the Ivory Coast, West Africa. Or you might be East African, like, like Ethiopian. You know what I'm saying? But like a nigga from the South, I was born in Texas. And since Texas is its own nation, I'm 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 by fucking nationality if I'm gonna claim my nation because Texas is also on the list. I'm a Texan. I'm not just an American. I'm a Texan. You see what I'm saying? So now you got these people that's moving more international these days, right? So then when you tell a nigga like when you from Louisiana and you tell somebody you from America. They'd be like, well, what part of America? You might say Louisiana. But then they would be like, well, I don't even know what that fucking, what that would be. Like a Louisianian? <laughs> a Louisianian? You might be a Louisianian. You know what I'm saying? A Louisianimal. How we, how we say it, it's a Louisianimal. But then you got Nebraskans from Nebraskas. Uh, you know, you got Georgians, Georgians from Georgia, I guess you would say, Floridians from Florida, New Yorkers from New York, Californians from California, shit like that, you feel me? So, but those, those are not nationalities, but a Texan can, can legally say that there are, that's their nationality because they're a Texan. But here is the big thing. Extra educated motherfuckers, people, they want to be like, well, nah, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, we got the Moors out here. You know what I'm saying? Nobody, the, like, like, I ain't even gonna, I ain't even gonna go past the, I mean, shit, bro. The Moors, they'll, they'll be like, okay, well, we Moors, you know, no, never been to Morocco. But you might call this Al Morocco, America. You might call it Al Morocco or Total Island, but it's not the majority rule. That's that's our that's our own people. That's like tribal. You know what I'm saying? It's it's. I guess you could say it's national, but it's not really organized like a nation is. Like most nations have their own currency. We use American dollars. Or we use crypto, or we use gold and silver. We don't have our own currency uh, for the Moors. You know what I'm saying? We don't have one yet. Maybe it'll be a crypto. But then at the same time, because I mean, like Germans, well, the European, the European Union, you know, they done came together and they got their own thing. But they, you know, over there they had their own little marks and and shit like that back in the day. But you know, it's like we don't have our own money. We don't have any gold reserves. We don't have our own infrastructure as Moors here in America. We we piggyback off the American system. So we have, I feel, a couple of options, but I won't discuss them on this uh, video here. But it's just something to think about for the Moors, for the people that are claiming that nationality. You know, my grandma told me we was Choctaw. We are, we are Shata, you know, uh, which is a Native American tribe. And there's been a lot of work to go into the family and, you know, do the roles, find the roles and shit. Cause like, truth be told, I'm one of the darkest people in my family. But if you saw my mom and you would, and if you knew that my mom was darker than my dad, like by complexion, then you could probably, you know, you would probably understand me a little bit more because all black people are not the same. But by majority rules, 
all black people are the same. And so, therefore, all white people are the same. All Asians are the same. Well, no, 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 no. Let me take that back. All white people are the same. All yellow people are the same. All brown people are the same. And all black people are the same. So if you're a brown skin, you're either going to be a Mexican or you're going to be a Middle Easterner. If you're white, you're a European. If you're yellow, you're Chinese. There's no other Asian places. By majority rules, though. By majority rules. You feel me? Because, like, the majority don't break it all the way down where we can specify you in particularly. It's always, oh, well, you know, y'all or, 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 or that group of people. It's, we got to address the mass, but it's not even the real mass. It's all, it's all fucked. It's, it's not even organized. You know what I'm saying? So my perspective on a lot of that shit is just is dead like bro that shit don't even matter people keep trying to fucking color people and it don't really even matter on the cool it don't you know what i'm saying when the dollars went from gold back with the little gold with the little gold tinge on the, on the bills and shit like that and the, and the silver the silver back bills had the little go, uh little silver and they had the little uh blue blue uh label on there to let you know that the the bearer of the uh of the note, you know, you can go ahead on exchange it for his weight in silver, or whatever, whatever. Then it changed to greenbacks. So the dollar was gold back, and then it changed to green back, and we still spent that motherfucker. Like it wasn't shit. Like, like nigga. So then when they came back with the big face, we was still just, you know, no problem. It's all the same. It's all the same. Different colors. Majority rules said it was all the same though. So then when the blue faces, the Monopoly money, the, the blues and the orange and all that, you know, came out, then it was like, it's all the same and niggas getting some of this money now. Oh, yeah, they let us have that Monopoly money. But like, like, look how many black people came into massive wealth when the blue bills hit. From the blue bloods, the, they, they sent out the blue bills for, for, the, for the, you know, to make you feel like you was coming up. Was it a really a come up though? We still don't have our own infrastructure. We still don't have our own water supplies. We, we still, we barely got our own banks, our own bankers, I should say. But we still using their money in our banks. So really it's just an extension of the Federal Reserve. It's not really its own entity, in my opinion. Because majority rules, y'all going to be right. Y'all going to say, oh, no, that's all the same. This nigga wrong as fuck, which that's cool. But, hey, that's cool, bro. That's cool. Because I, I could be wrong and I don't mind being wrong. Because I know I'm not in the majority rule. So I expect to be excluded from the majority, majority of the time. But that's why I don't, I just do my own thing now. Like, like, bro. A lot of things that I done dreamed about coming true done came to fruition. A lot of things that I had been trying to put together then came together like just, I don't even understand it how this shit just came together. This shit just fell into place. You know what I'm saying? And the, the, the most remarkable thing about it was that truly, truly, the progression was made without assistance. When I say without assistance, that means that people did shit for free. I didn't have to pay nobody. I didn't have to do this. I didn't have to do that. That's assistance. When you do something from the heart, like, like that actually makes progress in what I'm trying to build, that's assistance. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't really have any assistance. I paid people to do the certain works that needed to be done. Yeah. Then no one just loaned me no money to just go ahead on and just do this. aside from maybe my dad like because i had i had hit a i had hit a hard little uh little struggle last year and my dad helped me out you know what i'm saying he really was the only person that i could really just say help me out you know what i'm saying for a long for a long time so looking at how the majority move and 
not moving like the majority, seeing where it's gotten me personally, I don't have no problems with it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like look at look at most people that make it somewhere in life where the majority want, wants to be at or they wish they could be there. Like, think about it, bro. All your billionaires, your millionaires, hell, even most of your thousandaires, most people ain't even, they, they wish they could be there. You know what I'm saying? And then a lot of the time, as the majority, like, I remember when we was getting paid. I just started, I had just started working my first job. I was getting paid $4.95 for the first 90 days at McDonald's. I was like, man, bro, I want to get paid five twenty five. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man, how y'all gonna play me for ninety days? Y'all just gonna get all this work out me for for the cheap? Ninety days go by, I get raised to five twenty five. Boom, the the I don't know how long it was, but then they, they had the next little inspection where where you the evaluation. You know what I'm saying? And then after that evaluation, I went to five thirty five, and I was like, oh shit. Then eight months into me working there. They promoted me to like the little assistant manager, a little red shirt, and I was getting paid six twenty five, and I was happy that I was getting paid more. But I hated my job. I hated just standing there, not like like I'm not a good I'm not a good person like like a manager type person. Like I'm not just gonna tell niggas, hey yo, you need to move this over there. You need to hurry the fuck up. You need to do this and get that order out. I'm not that dude. I'm the dude that's gonna sit there and I'm gonna watch you fucking up. Like, if I ain't helping, if I'm the manager, I'm going to sit there and I'm going to watch you fuck up. I'm going to see who takes the initiative to correct your fuck up. I'm going to promote them and fire your ass. Or I'm going to promote them, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, get them, get them a raise type of nigga. And um, you, you probably going to get a pay doc. You're going to get some extra days off. You're going to get reprimanded because you don't know how to do the job that you obviously applied for knew how to do it when you applied this is how you got the job but now that you're in the in the motion of actually doing the job you act like you don't know how to do it i'm fucking fire your ass get you out of them now majority rules they'll be like no give them a chance no you have to keep you have to work with people or you have to give people a chance and, and they have to progress but a lot of the time and I guess this is where I differ from a lot of people. Growing up, the way I was raised, we didn't get them type of chances. You either got the shit right the first time or you got your ass whipped and then, boom, you got to do the shit again. It was no, oh, take your time with them. Oh, be nice. Speak softly. It, like, that, that, that's not from where I'm from. I don't know where that, that like, that's from the other side. So going out into needless to say i didn't i did, I wasn't no manager at the mcdonald's for much long for a long time anyway i quit that bitch and I, I worked there for like eight nine months i quit that bitch like a couple weeks after they promoted me i was like nah I ain't, that ain't my type of thing and um i just moved around i had a lot of jobs now majority rules says that's a bad thing but to me it let me find myself in the whole work the whole american workforce you know what i'm saying like like how do i add to the gdp how do i do my part above everything excuse me because i, I wasn't feeling the first if 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 i had to stick with that job for the, my whole life bro i would hate life i would hate life you know what i'm saying so when people tell you, oh, you got to stick with that job, you know, like, like stick with it for two or three years and this, that, and that, bro, if you don't like what you're doing, why you not, ha why are you pissing yourself off every day? Quit that motherfucker and go do what you want to do. Ain't nobody like, like you, like people got to understand this. Okay. Listen to me. People got to understand this. When other people see you doing something that you want to do that makes your life happy, that that actually, like, satisfies you 110%, of course they're going to tell you, oh, you shouldn't, oh, 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 of course, that's the hate, that's the jealousy, that's the envy, you know what I'm saying? Because they couldn't do it for themselves, so they got to tear you down, so that way they feel better about telling themselves, oh, yeah, it's not possible to just do what I want to do, it's not possible to live the life that I want, it's not possible to do, it. like, like, they they have this they have this mentality where they just defeat themselves 
You know what I'm saying? So I vibe with a lot of entrepreneurs. I vibe with a lot of people that just they they just think outside the box. We just we not in the mass number. We over here doing our own thing. And a lot of these people, a lot of the time, we really don't have anything in common except the fact that we don't care what the masses think. We do what we want to do. That's that's really the only thing we got in common a lot of the time. Because a lot of the a lot of the people that I click, 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 tight with, uh, they don't even do music, bro. All this like like I be sharing tips, I be sharing information and stuff. And majority of the people that I really rock with do not do any type of music. They regular ass people. Majority of people that I rock with, they be regular ass people. They be getting mad sometimes about the stuff that I say or, or the stuff that I post. You know what I'm saying? A lot of my posts trigger people. And I understand it's going to trigger people. But think about this. I'm just speaking my own personal thoughts a lot of the time or I'm posting my own personal thoughts. I'm sharing something that's from within without any influence from the uh, majority. You know what I'm saying? So when I share something and it's not what everybody else was talking about, those people that the shoe fits on, they feel triggered. Oh, he talking about me. Oh, this. I mean, if why would you get mad about it? If this if you know this is what you do, this is how you carry yourself. Why do you get mad about it if people are just speaking about it? Why do you get mad about it if people say I wouldn't do that? That's not my lane. I I mm. Now y'all now you getting mad. Like I'm talking about behemoth. I'm talking about just phew, mad as fuck. Oh, I'm, I'm ready to fight that nigga. I'm not. Hey, I haven't heard anybody really say that part about me personally. But like, they just be, they just be, uh, built up animosity and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Back in the day, yeah, probably a couple niggas had wanted to fight, whatever, whatever. But a lot of time, I don't even talk down on people. I don't even need to. Like, bro, I just watch your life. If I laugh, I laugh. If, I'm, if I feel sorrow or I feel compassionate, then I reach out. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, man, you live your life. I'm not trying to interfere with it because this is my experience, too. Trying to help people. A lot of the time when I try to help people out and then, like, like say, like, I had this home, one homeboy in New Orleans. He was trying to call the little lens crafter place to get his, I mean, to get his glasses because they, they was already supposed to have been done. They already supposed to be there. So he called. And when he called, the lady can't understand him, realizing, I realize he has a heavy New Orleans accent. He is speaking to a Caucasian lady that is obviously not anywhere hood at all, period. I mean, she works at the Eyeglass Center. She is very proper. But this dude gets on the phone and he starts talking. He's like, and she can't understand shit. I, he, he hang up. He called back. Same lady answered the phone again. She said something. She was like, sir, I can't understand you. Hold, please hold a minute while I go get somebody else that, that could probably help. Boom. Come off hold. We was on hold for about five, ten minutes. I'm sitting in my car with him. You know what I'm saying? I was going to give him a ride to go pick him up if they was ready that, that day. So we sitting in the car together. So they come off hold. It's another lady. He starts saying whatever again. She can't even under. She was about to put him on hold again. I was like, bro, let me talk to them. I went on ahead. Hello, ma'am. My name is Don. I was just well. Actually, I gave I gave her I gave the lady his information so that way she thought you know whatever whatever. So boom. But I got on there with this white people voice. You see what I'm saying? I got on there with something that they could understand, that they could interpret, make sense of, and then. Go apply it in life. You see what I'm saying? So then, after after that experience, my homeboy was like, bro, I need a nigga like you on my team. You know, I mean, I understand how I could be useful. But that's, that's, that's the thing. A lot of people just want to use someone like me. 
Like, oh, well, he got that. He could talk to them, and then we can come up like that. So, yeah, we just going to have that nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, like, bro. Like, I done been around, a, a, like, it's more, more shit. I done been around a lot of places. You know what I'm saying? I know how a lot of people would think. So, even for a lot of these females, that's why I don't fuck with them. Because they'd be like, oh, he an easy target. He, he easy. I'm going to go ahead on. But I show compassion. You know what I'm saying? But by majority rules, that's some simp shit to show compassion. So, like, you know, when I when I handled that for my homeboy, majority rules, that that was some simp shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, bro, that's some weak, that's some that's some weak nigga shit. Cause you talking like you a white person to them people and da da da. Oh, uh, that that's some that's some simp shit because you helping a bitch out. She she gotta go to the hospital. So you go ahead on and ride over. She trusts you to go ahead on, ride over there, get her kids. Feed them, which she don't even know a nigga did. I fed her kids and then took them to where she wanted them to be at for the for the day while she was handling her business at the hospital. You see what I'm saying? But then a lot of people would be like, oh, that's some simp shit. Oh, man, you catering to them hoes. All right. But see, if that was your mama and she was fucking with a nigga like me or she called she called a nigga like me that, you know, her friend. And then I was like, oh, no, I can't do that for you, shawty. You know what I'm saying? That's some simp shit. Yo, your kids just going to have to fend for themselves. How would you have felt as the child of that motherfucker? You see what I'm saying? See, majority rules, they'll get you fucked up out here. They'll have you doing bad out here. Because really, the majority don't give a fuck about nobody except themselves. But then they'll put it off as, oh, well, he a narcissist because he, this, that, and the third. He, uh, this person selfish or, or, or they always trying to start something. Man, shut the fuck up, bro. Real talk. Just mind your own lane and you wouldn't be so involved with so many feelings all the time. You see what I'm saying? But majority rules. So, you know what I'm saying? I need to stop saying you know what I'm saying so much. I really do say that. Hey. R.I.P. DJ Practicat. Know what I'm saying. That's where I get that from. Fucking Alexandria Radio. So, majority rules again. <laughs> people say, people think that entertainment is just some innocent whatever, whatever. They don't really understand silent weapons. You see what I'm saying? A lot of people don't understand brainwashing. They don't understand the MK Ultra mind control stuff they don't understand a lot of stuff and i'm not saying that i'm the expert but at least i got a motherfucking understanding to grasp the way the shit work and then apply a defense for my own mind so that way i don't become a brainwashed part of the herd you heard me but so um yeah i got that I got that know what I'm saying from DJ Practic Cat listening to the radio all the time. Because when I was younger, I used to always listen to the radio. I used to record the stuff on tape. I used to have the boom box with the little record button. So when you re when you playing the radio, you can hit the record on the tape and record your favorite songs and then come back. Y'all know, if y'all if y'all real 80s babies, 70s, 70s, uh, I don't even know what to call the 70s people. Because, uh, you know what I'm saying? But if you a real 80s baby like me, yeah, even, the, even the early 90s, you know what I'm saying? You probably remember doing stuff like that. That's how we used to get down. We didn't have the streaming services. We didn't have, uh, hell, CDs was just coming out. I remember CDs was just coming out, like, on a, on a mass, on a massive level, on a, on a, on a, uh, majority, uh, uh, of, of, you know, artists was putting out, instead of tapes, they went to CDs, because CDs was supposed to be, you know, lasting longer, um, you know, the tape, it'll, it'll start running and then it, then you had the tape will get fucked up and it'll get eaten up. Or, or if you stored it too long, then the shit, like, you know what I'm saying? The tape got fucked up easily. So that's why they did the CDs, right? And the majority thought the CDs was going to be, yeah, this is going to last us forever. You know what I'm saying? Until the bitch got scratched <laughs> and then started skipping. You know what I'm saying? Bro. Then we go to, we had a little quick second. I don't know if anybody, if anybody was really paying attention, we had a quick second where the USB flash drives could have made a, a, a interim into the world of music, um, like the CDs did and stuff, but they it was circumvented by streaming. You see what I'm saying? Now, hold on, because I, I, 
bro, we on the next wave already. Because now they coming back. They was like, wait a minute. Streaming everything on the cloud. But say if the say if my connection's down, I need a backup. So now they gon they gonna double back to these um to these USB files until they find another option. But um speaking of USB files and stuff like that, this is gonna be one of the options. This is a track rhino card, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, look at that right there. You see what I'm saying? It got the little the little and you throw that, you throw that in the in the little USB drive right there. You just slide this card in and all the info. You know what I'm saying? I'm using this for music. I'm not telling you how to use technology. I'm just using this piece of technology to put music and and all my videos and any other content that I create on there. And I have I'm selling these for a hundred dollars. I have one person that's that's purchased one that I'll be sending off here this weekend. But um, you know what I'm saying? Track Rhino. Um, these these cards this is this is the new wave and you just tap it on the back of the phone or you can put it in the computer and boom all the content so as i the other thing about this is say if i give this card to you today in three weeks if i do another video say i drop another animated video of one of my songs or something like that and i upload it onto the onto the other side of this platform for this card you'll be able to view it three weeks from like when i upload it onto the platform it'll automatically update on your card so you you don't have to worry about trying to keep up and oh what did he i got you i'm gonna keep you updated because this is gonna be the wave for the majority of artists here in the next five to ten years we're not gonna we either gonna be on the cloud or we're gonna be passing out these type of little cards that's gonna have all our information on it and um boom you know what i'm saying this is it's still in beta testing right now which I do a lot of, I, you know, quiet is kept. I do do a lot of beta testing um, for companies. Some for free. Some do. Some do pay me. But um, I've done. I've been doing beta testing since I was with Reverb Nation, like back in 2015, 2016, and stuff. They have, they, you know, platforms offer different things, and you can jump off into it. You know. Now, back to the majority rules of things, though. Now, I like how the majority is straight up Democratic, Republican. They don't, there's no in-betweens. Even though there are in-betweens, don't get me wrong, majority does not see anything besides Democratic and Republican. So, if you know about the Democratic Republican Party, you do your history back in the days of the Whigs, and then they had the Federalist, and then they had the Democratic Republic. Do your research on it. You know what I'm saying? And then you'll realize that they're both one and the same. The Democratic Party and the Republican Party are under the same umbrella. Yes, ideologies spoken are spoken are different, but acts in office follow suit of the greater plan. And we could argue about it, but like I said, I'm okay with being wrong. I'm okay with being wrong, cause a lot of times, time will tell. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? Majority rules. So, you know. We gon' either we just gonna keep voting Democratic Republican. That's it. Majority rules. So all black people are the same. Even though I might see a German female over there, or I might see a a, a redheaded uh, Irish woman over there. You know, all black people are the same. We all from a continent called Africa. We don't have any countries that we're from. We don't have any nationality that we claim collectively we're just black people african-american two continents just yeah just don't yeah just throw them together i don't know boom even asian you got asians and koreans and japanese but you got black people in america because if i go to africa one real africans like what we know as africans because we just talk in english real africans as we say in english don't even say they're from Africa like that unless they know 
you're, they're speaking to English speaking people, then they'll say, yes, I'm from Africa. But other than that, they ain't not, they ain't not saying that. They from Rwanda and the Congolese and, and uh, Ivory Coast and Ethiopia, uh, um, Eritrea, Egyptian. You know what I'm saying? But majority rules, they all black. So, since everybody is black that is colored, then you get into the letters of law. And you find out what black means in law. Not in society, but in law. Black don't mean nothing that you want to be in law, in legalese. You see what I'm saying? There's different types of English that, that people, the majority don't even give a fuck about. It doesn't matter to the majority. You feel me? But there are different types of English that are spoken on the regular across the world. And other motherfuckers in different countries know this. But people right here in America don't even know it. Don't even care about it. Won't even study it. Don't give two shits about it. Could save your life. She probably gets probably stop getting shot by the fucking police if motherfuckers would learn this shit as a majority. But we don't give a fuck about our own people. So we don't study. We don't do none of that. Cause the majority rules, bro. It's just crazy. So with the blind leading the blind. And the majority ruling. Where does that leave a person like me? I'm just an independent artist. You know what I'm saying? Getting, Trying to do my thing out the mud. Independent publisher. I own my own publishing. Where, where does that leave me? As far as. How do I progress? If I were to if I were to blow up, right? You know how all these famous people they got their little write ups and stuff like that, right? On the, on their artistry and shit. So if I were to blow up, and then I would be like, "Yo, I'm just another black man out here trying to get it." On the cool, I just fed into the majority. On the cool, I just helped brainwash the majority by declaring, by declaring myself black. Y'all heard about that white lady that declared herself black in the court? And what happened to her in court? Y'all hear about them people that come from like the Middle East or whatever and they put that they're white like these Iranians or these these uh, Afghanis that come here and they put on the paperwork that they're white or the Latinos they put on there they're white. But then black people want to wonder why they keep getting shot dead in the street. See, when we're talking about race... It has nothing to do with your skin color. But no one's going to tell you that because majority of ru majority rules. And majority is always going to tell you, no, your race is your skin color. Your race is your skin color. Well, if race was skin color, why I got Hispanic on there and not brown? Why I got uh, Native American on there and not red? Why I got Alaskan Indian on there and not yellow? But no one wants to ask those questions because to the majority, they'll be shunned and looked at crazy. And like, why are you asking all these damn questions? Well, bitch, because I know the motherfuckers been lying to us ever since. If we want to believe the history of, of, of Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving was a trick, was a play on words then. And they fucking tricked us. Yeah, but that's if you want to go by that. There's so many stories about Thanksgiving, so many different stories about Thanksgiving. That's another thing you just got to have to, you're going to have to do your research on. But majority rules. So majority says the pilgrims came, the uh, Squanto and the other uh, Indians, the red men uh, pay homage to the white man coming 
and 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 you know the white man oh man they had they went and got them food and they went and farmed for them and made sure they had a nice plentiful bountiful uh feast for thanksgiving for no reason we did they came on a boat oh my gosh we never how how we never seen boats before if we was already navigating the seas way beforehand but everybody wants to start the American history at 1492. Don't nobody want to go back in, in prehistoric times. Before they wrote the shit times. And find out something different. They don't want to go against the majority. But if you know the majority of people are being lied to. If you know that only 1% rules the world. Why wouldn't you try to find some fucking truth? Because you, you condone it. Because you condone it. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, even sending kids to school. I was I was for homeschooling my son when I went on the run as a fugitive felon back in 2015. I ain't give a fuck. Nigga, you ain't about to go to school. I'm about to. I'm, I sat there with him. I taught him his ABCs and writing and all that stuff, words and all that. Cause I, I, I know what school is gonna teach you. I've already been there. I've graduated, honors. So that was my game plan. Didn't work out like that. Back at school, my daughter. I want her to go to a different education system, but you know, a lot of the time. When your hands is tied and the, the society around you, majority rules, so they'll snitch on you and they'll send you to jail if you go against what they're going, they're doing. Because, hey, you can't be different from us. Oh, you, you got to do the same thing as us. Bro, y'all trying to trap me like the white man tried to trap me. You feel me? Y'all enslaving me like they done enslaved my ancestors. I can't be different. I gotta be, I have to assimilate. Because majority rules. And if you don't assimilate, you're going to be outcast and shunned. In this social ass society. So, you know what I'm saying? If majority rules... The majority rules. But understand, that's why I got illicit tattooed on my back. Because fuck that. I'm breaking laws, bro. I don't have to put it out there, everything that I do. Go listen to the music. You want to ask me questions? You want to get a statement, direct statement? No. Go listen to the music. And go, go learn something for yourself. Go do your research. I'm going to make you work to get to know me. Real talk, I'ma make y'all work to get to know me. I'm not trying to give y'all no free, no, no. Bro, I done got, I done, the reason why I even went on the run as a fugitive felon in the first place is from being too fucking nice and friendly with motherfuckers, giving motherfucker a ride for $10 in gas money. Turn around, it's a whole setup. Three, three individuals in my shit, I'm the only one that go to jail. They got the drugs, I ain't even, get, I ain't even get out the car. Police already was watching. They was they was already watching in the area. They was like it was a whole setup, bro. Police man gonna try to tell me I ran a white stop line on the ground. There ain't even one there. I got video footage of the shit. But don't know attorneys and lawyers want to go against the legal system in Bear County, Texas. So I guess I'm just gonna be on the run then, cause I ain't about to sit up in that jail and do time. I got kids to feed. I got a business to run. I got I got shit to do out here, bro. Plus. I wasn't even at fault. They gonna tell the policeman that I was pointing the gun while I'm driving the car and the police behind me and I'm supposed to be stashing the drugs in the back of my, way down in the back of my seat. I could barely reach in this motherfucker back here in the back of my seat where the pocket at. But majority rules. So the two white people that was in the back that had 100 grams of meth on them said that Oh, officer, he held the gun to us while he was pulling over the car and he stuffed the meth down there and this, that, and the third. 
don't even, I didn't even know what meth looked like until that damn day when the policeman showed me what the shit looked like. You feel me? No, y'all don't feel me. Because y'all be like, oh, well, that's still y'all fault. Well, shit, I guess it is my fault. Because you know why? I shouldn't have showed no compassion and no love to no fucking strangers. That's why it's my fault. I should have just steered clear of the whole situation and not even gave nobody a ride. That's why it's my fault. So that's why you don't see me doing a lot of shit that I used to do. The old me was very nice, very polite, willing to help. But after getting fucked over so many times, man, fuck all that shit. Because the majority rules and the majority times I do help people out, I get fucked over. Because I look past that selfishness. I stopped doing that now. So yeah, you don't, you're not getting a lot from me no more. Because I see your intentions now. Because the majority rules. They show me what it is. You see what I'm saying? The majority of people that I fucked with. Tried to help out. That did backstab me. Or like. Uh, 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 help a bitch. Help a bitch come up. And then she's like. Oh nigga you ain't. I don't need you no more. The fuck I look like helping more, more women for this I don't, it only took me two of them two women that I really just helped come up help come up from they from where they was at and they they probably won't even admit it I don't really care you know what I'm saying I know where I, I know I ain't got no woman next to me and I can make some moves and, and come up how I need to come up and I know that I ain't seen them women come up where I where we was at when we was together they ain't never came back up to that so just trust and believe, bro. Just trust and believe, bro. That's all I got. That's all I'm going to say on that. But majority rules. So, you know, I I was I was simping for them hoes. You know what I'm saying? Cuz majority rules and that's what they would say. If 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 you ever if you ever been a stand-up nigga and put your neck on the line and actually do some real stuff that real men just like real men used to do but now men these days don't do like when they was like chivalry is dead man i still hold the door open for women how is chivalry dead but chivalry's dead because majority rules bro so you know what i'm saying i don't know i just i just want y'all to think about this bandwagon ass mentality a lot of y'all have you know what i'm saying this this clout chasing culture that a lot of y'all endorse and um, this dumbing down that y'all su subject yourselves to. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really want y'all to just think on this on a daily. And not, not just for yourself, man. Think about this for your children, for your aunts and uncles, your grandmother, your grandfather, your mom, pa, your cousins. Think about how this affects the whole family unit. And why generational curses continue to be deeply rooted in certain communities more than other communities maybe asking people to think is the pro is the problem you know what I'm saying because a lot of people don't want to think they get off of work and don't want to think you see what I'm saying they get out of school and don't want to think so with the AI that's coming out the the little chip that they're gonna plant in people so so they could think for you y'all asking for it Y'all asking for it. You want someone else to think for you. Which I'm not saying that's wrong. I mean, if you want to be controlled, be controlled. But just know, I don't want to be controlled. I'd rather be a controller than being someone controlled. You see what I'm saying? Hell, if I had to choose. Because other, really, I don't even want to. That's, that's a lot of work to control somebody else. Like, bro, I need my hands to drink. I can't pause this game if I got to keep controlling all these people. I can't pause the game. So, I don't even really want to con I don't even want to be a controller. I hire some managers to control y'all ass. You see what I'm saying? Like that's that's where my mind at because everybody's just going with going with the agenda. Everybody's going with the new world order so smoothly. You know what I'm saying? I can't blame artists and other people that joined the Illuminati that join these secret societies, these fraternities and masons and all. I can't I can't hate on none of them. I can't blame none of them. I really can't. You know what I'm saying? They got together their organization, their peoples, and 
certain evils that that are that are sent at them, they fight them. Like like, I don't really see a lot of Masons going to jail like that. Like yeah, they get a little slap on the wrist and might get you know might have to do some little stuff, but they not they not in there like that. You know what I'm saying? Because they got their network right, especially the Scottish right ones, the ones from the Scottish right. I I don't know none of them. None of them in jail. I ain't, I ain't never heard not now one of them go to jail. But you know what I'm saying? That's a fraternity. Just like police, police um, is like, that's a fraternal organization. Just like with fireworks, they got a fi uh, firefighters. They have a, a fraternal organization. You know what I'm saying? So like all these fraternal organizations and these people that's got organized, got their paperwork together, got their money right, got their little infrastructure together. Got They got plans. They moving. And so for the majority rules of these majority black people that's out here, that they don't have none of that. I mean, what like, what is dancing in front of police going to do? What do you seek to achieve by dancing, crumping in front of a police as a grown ass man? As a grown ass black man, you are over there dancing and crumping and all this shit in front of fucking police. In front of these white boys with guns. I don't think I seen, it might have been a black one out there that day, but mo majority of them police that day that I seen on that video, they was white. And he over here crumping. Like, like, bro, you know the motherfuckers can't dance. Who invented most of the dances that, that we even danced? Like, like, who invented most of that stuff, black people? Okay, let's just keep it real. So, you was expecting to get into a dance battle with the police officer crumping and shit at a Black Lives Matter move. Majority rules, bro. Majority rules. And then motherfuckers were watching that, they was either laughing or they was like, yeah, nigga, yeah, like, like, up in the nigga, like, like, he really ain't doing shit. What is you talking about, bro? The fuck is y'all niggas on, man? Weirdo shit. <laughs> like, for real, that's, that's weirdo shit. But I'll be the weirdo. You know what I'm saying? But that's weirdo shit to me. But y'all call me the weirdo. Okay. Okay. Then the other thing was them niggas that had marched the them niggas that had marched to the uh KKK people or whatever. They they you know it was a whole bunch of and then and then these there's buku white people just going off laughing about the shit that's on YouTube. They got videos of I ain't the only person talking about my topics. Like, bro, my topic my talking points is very valid. It's very much valid. You just ain't listening to the conversation. You see what I'm saying? You just ain't in the circle of motherfuckers that's actually discussing how to change some shit. You condoning the shit that's already that majority. The, you condoning the majority rules. See what I'm saying? There's there are people that's out here that are like me that are like, man, y'all on some fuck shit, straight up. Y'all on some fuck shit, straight up. You see what I'm saying? Straight up. So. It's people that's like me that are out here trying to figure out something or, or find somebody, uh, uh, come to some type of common ground or something like that because, bro, this shit, this shit looking stupid out here. Every single day it seemed like a nigga getting killed out here by the police. If, and we was already getting killed every day by our own people. So now the genocide and the, and the, and the homicides then came together and intertwined. So now the, the, the fucking murder rate is like four times higher for black people, for black men. You know what I'm saying? Black women, yeah, some of them getting, you know, Breonna Taylor, RIP, you know what I'm saying? Some of them getting popped or, or, or getting done wrong, like Sandra Bland, you know, RIP. I don't forget about those. But that's two incidences compared to how many black men By the police. How many? Now, I know sisters that's down there in New Orleans getting knocked off by their baby daddies and stuff like that. And we ain't talking about that. But I'm just saying. That's. I mean, I I could see what Waka Flocka was saying. Like, if we like, like how we going to how we going to be mad at the police if we don't stop our own killing our own because we don't have that. We we losing our own numbers. Like imagine if if we could stop killing our own people, we would have that many more people to go and fight. If we were about that fight, but majority ain't about the fight. They about that. Oh yes, a massa. 
Oh, we gonna get in troubles if we do that. I swear to God, I, I swear to God, I, when I went to Afghanistan eight years after 9-11, I went to Afghanistan eight years after 9-11, and we was out there killing them motherfuckers out there. Bombing them, going in, dr driving in, doing, we getting ambushed, we gotta pop back in it. Come on, man, eight years later. Here it is, not even a whole year after a lot of these, after a lot of these newest incidents like George Floyd and all that. And the most we got is um, Black Lives Matter owned by a white man, Soros, uh, sending in his own people to go and cause ruckus to make it look like niggas is ignorant. We was looting. We was out there dancing in front of the police. We was um, asking for the unemployment check. <laughs> <laughs> we was asking for the stimulus check, you know what I'm saying? But we mad. But we not mad to deny they money. Like if I'm like like bro, street law, the code in the game that was upheld back in the day had us going somewhere. On the cool, it had us going somewhere. That's why they had to knock off all them leaders from back in the day. Because they were smart and they knew that the majority of y'all niggas don't have the vision or the foresight to even see the end result of the plan. Y'all don't even have the patience to maintain it 10 years, 15 years, so you can actually see the change. You see what I'm saying? Like, like, this the difference. Like, if I would have expected to get paid royalties and shit like that for my music way back then, 10, 15 years ago, I'd have just quit. I'd have been like 99% of these niggas that just quit. They, they find them a bitch. The bitch tell them to get them a job. They got kids. Or they go running in the streets. That's it. Most of them niggas quit. I'm, I'm one of the few that actually stuck with it for such a long amount of time. With no result. For such a long amount of time. So now that, I'm, that, I'm, that I've learned, I had to... I had to go in come back and this is going to war i went to afghanistan recording down there. all this stuff all this stuff going on in life and i'm still got my vision that i wanted to make it i wanted to get paid off of my music that was it that was that was the vision how do i make my music pay me by just putting it out there to the world what's the because i because i had shit on on distributed before and i i i went three four years as a BMI affiliate, uh, as a BMI uh, songwriter, no royalty checks. I I didn't get that until maybe about six years after I signed up with BMI. Then they started, I started to see something come in, but that's because I, you know, I tried, I tried different avenues. I was, I, I didn't care what the majority told me. Yeah, the majority tells me a lot of stuff, but when I put my one song, Maze of Life, on the radio. And they, you know, it was like six stations. It was like six or seven stations uh, across the U.S. that played it. And then PRS uh, over there in Europe picked up uh, the song. So I get, you know, I don't know what they're using it for, but they send me a royalty check every year from over there. So, you know what I'm saying? PR, shout out PRS. You know what I'm saying? If y'all need some more music, let me know. <laughs> let me know. I, I do something for y'all. We could, we could talk numbers and we could, you know what I'm saying? But anyway. If I would have just listened to the majority or had the mentality of the majority, I wouldn't be where I am right now. I wouldn't be receiving royalty checks. Spotify and, and YouTube and, and all them, they wouldn't pay me. Like when I go in there and I see Google, YouTube, Spotify, Amazon, even platforms that I don't even know. I know they from overseas because I ain't never even heard of some of these platforms. You see what I'm saying? But I would have never known this part of the this part of the game or this part of the business had I quit. Had I had the majority mentality, I would have never made it that far. It's just like a lot of these people when they go to college and you going for this degree, you drop out freshman year, sophomore year, or you could be 15 hours away from that master's and you just quit. Just ah, uh, I don't want to do this no more. I'm going to go work at McDonald's. You ever seen someone with a master's at McDonald's working or in anywhere in fast food? A person with a motherfucking master's degree working in fast food? Hell, even a person with a bachelor's degree working in fast food. I'm 
I'ma look twice at your ass because you don't need no degree to work in fast food. Hell, high school kids could work in fast food and come up without a degree. Be a manager without a degree. So what is you doing on the fries, my nigga? What is you doing flipping the patties, boy? Come on now. Woman put on that red shirt, think she really running something. Yeah, I'm a manager. What you managing? McDonald's. No, no, no. They don't even say that. They be like, fast food. I'm in the fast food industry. I'm in the food service industry. I be like, well, what yeah. And come and find out a bitch, a bitch a manager at McDonald's. But she, her mind, you can't tell her nothing. Bitch, I was making more than you as an um, intern at, at uh, fuck. How much manager at McDonald's? Man, I was making more at a call center, answering the phone all day. Bitches love to talk on the phone. I just went over there to make some quick money, and I'm making more than the manager at McDonald's. But the bitch thinks she better than me because I work at a call center and she a manager at McDonald's. Bitch, the wordplay don't mean nothing. The wordplay never meant nothing to me because I see through that shit. I'm going to look through that shit and interpret it my own way. You know what I'm saying? So, majority rules, though. A lot of fellas will agree. That's that's the mentality. You you meet a chick that's a manager, uh, and and not I'm not even talking about a general manager. You just the store manager. But you feel that you way up here above all these above everybody that walk in the door. A multi millionaire. I done seen some people when I was in San Antonio working at McDonald's. I done seen millionaires walk into this bitch, right? Motherfucker, low key millionaire. I know because I actually had talked to them through the drive through window before working the drive through. You know what I'm saying, motherfuckers? People, off, people have offered me a lot of a lot of things in life, and I just turn it down. Um, cause I was I had that major. Oh no, I, don't, I, I had that mind frame. So I'm I'm gonna speak on it, and I'm trying to wake y'all up and recondition y'all mind frame so y'all can wake the fuck up and get on some new shit. Cause this is a new world coming. It's coming fast coming fast i told y'all back on january 3rd 2020 that we was in world war three just because motherfuckers ain't getting drafted and you don't see planes and bombs dropping and shit like that don't mean we not at war it's a psychological war before anything after they win your mind then they go they gonna influence you to go ahead on and pick up the arms and go out there and shoot some motherfuckers because when we went Eight years after 9-11 to Afghanistan, the soldiers that was there on the first first fucking invasion, they remember jumping off them planes and just shooting at them motherfuckers. They didn't give a damn. They was killing them. Laid them out. But you ain't going to hear that nowhere in the news. You actually have to know people that have been there. You have to know people that have survived over there. You see what I'm saying? Like, I got H1N1 swine flu when I was down there. I couldn't get no type of nothing. I had to literally just tough it out and survive that shit on quarantine in a dark-ass hut by my fucking self. Half a world away from my family and my children. My dad also, at the same, around the same time, had a blood clot traveling up from his knee almost into his lungs and i'm in quarantine i'm almost dying if you have ever had h1n1 it is very much like how they tell you this coronavirus shit is with the fucking extra fluids like pneumonia type shit okay so i was drowning in my own fucking mucus a lot of the time had to lay on my side and then then i started getting other little symptoms and problems but i had to deal with that shit by my fucking self you see what I'm saying? My battles ain't coming in there nursing a nigga to help. They don't want to catch the swine flu. They not coming to fuck with me. Nigga, you left for dead right now until we figure out if you really going to die and then we just burn your body or if you going to heal and then we still don't really want you around us because you done had that shit. Then I got the nickname H1N1. Because I had the swine flu and I actually survived it back in 09 when all oh, the news was like, all these people are dying, all these people are dying. Imagine how a nigga felt. Then y'all wonder why motherfuckers 
come in later in life and, and experience certain shit and we just not we just not scared like everybody else. We not buying up bullshit like everybody else. Cause y'all ain't really been through a lot of these experiences. Y'all ain't really lived it. Once you start living shit, then you see why motherfuckers don't condone violence. Once you've been in a couple shootouts and you've seen a couple dead bodies and you cleaned up some brains off the floor and, and you've lost people that are close to you, then you'll understand why motherfuckers try to curve the violence. We don't popularize it. We curve that shit. Because it's not cool. It's not cool to see somebody in the casket can't even open the motherfucker because their face got shot off. But majority rules. So if I shoot somebody in the face... Instead of sending me to jail saying, oh, I'm wrong, y'all niggas should be lifting me up like my fucking mosh pit. You feel me? No, nah, y'all don't feel me. It's only for the people that's popular that y'all like. Then y'all be like, oh, you know, he, he had to do it. He had to do it. So it's hypocritical. And it's the masses. But I'm just one person sharing my own thoughts. And I'm going to be wrong for this shit. You know what I'm saying? But I'm used to being wrong. Shit. It ain't nothing but another day and another struggle and another fucking dollar. Same shit, bro. I'm trying to put us on some different shit. I'd like to see um, a Bill Cosby vision come to life where we actually own a CBS or a NBC type of thing. You know what I'm saying? That's my vision. That's my goal. Quiet is kept. I already got an FCC um, uh, license number or whatever the fuck. I'm waiting on the, I'm waiting on a couple million dollars in my account. Then I'm going to go ahead on and do what I do. I don't know what the fuck y'all going to do, but I be trying to reach out to these niggas. And I'm not going to tell y'all all the details of what I got planned because I can't trust half. I can't trust most of y'all. One, two, most of y'all is just going to try to talk a nigga out of it and try to down a nigga for thinking it. You see what I'm saying? So why the fuck am I going to like, like, why? Why? I'll wait. I'll find my right tribe. You know what I'm saying? I'll be the outcasted ass nigga. The nigga that don't nobody fuck with. I'll be him. You see what I'm saying? Because when I do end up fucking with people, choosing somebody to go head on and uplift, I uplift them. It's very evident. Every time. It's very evident. Something changes in their lives every time. It's very evident. And that's my experience. I'm not just making this shit up. You see what I'm saying? So, a lot of them people, they don't, we ain't even cool no more. A lot, of, a lot of people, like, you gotta think about it. When you are the outcast, why would people that are in cast say anything to put their position in cast at stake. That's just like. That's just like. The police chief. Having a fuck up son. That's just a drug dealer. And that's all he does. And the chief. Catches his son. In a fucking major ass transaction. And in front of the department. He just lets him go. Because that's his son. No they ain't about to. You got to. You going to have to do time. You going to have to. I mean you got caught in front of the. You got caught in front of the department. You see what I'm saying? So, for all these people that, that you know, that I did help, that we did make 100 racks in a year, that we did count 30 bands cash on my ironing board in less than 90 days, when we was, yeah, when we was moving, all them people can't fuck with them. Because majority rules. And majority says, if you simping, or if you're too friendly, we gonna fuck you over. That's my experience. I don't know about y'all, you know what I'm saying? I don't know everybody else's experience. But, hey, I was a military brat. I ain't got friends from first grade, second grade, and shit like that that I've known all my life. And we just, I don't have all that. You see what I'm saying? So, I'm just, all, I'm the new nigga all the time. I'm the nigga that, oh, he don't matter. Oh, he don't matter. Oh, he don't matter. Okay, cool. But as shit in my life materializes and I don't matter to you, realize why this shit is building up and you not around. Y'all can have the majority rule shit and keep that over there and stand on it. I'm going to stand on what I stand on and stand for 24-7, 25-8, 365. Nigga, 
that's that's just me. I'm gonna be me. I ain't even roll up this blunt. And a lot of a lot of people that don't know me, they probably think, "Oh man, he just random. He just off topic. He just no. We talking about majority rules and what I like and what I don't like from my experience with majority rules. You know what I'm saying? No, you don't. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to let y'all go. I'm about to roll up this blunt. Nice talking with you. An hour and 10 minutes, an hour and 11. I might just end it at an hour, 11, 11. Like, you know, the numerology. I like I like the occult stuff. I like the numerology. I like the horoscopes, the astrology. Because on the cool, it has helped me learn people in ways that I wasn't able to because I didn't I didn't meet my mom until I was 25. I never had friends from first and second grade that I just known all my life and shit like that. So so a lot of these other ways of of knowing people and and of knowing who they are, not just what they say, that it it has helped me vastly. You know what I'm saying? I just hope that if you're going to follow me, if you're going to fuck with me and my channel, y'all like, share, subscribe, y'all comment, y'all interact. That way we can build on more discussions in the future. You know what I'm saying? Real rap. 100.